let's do a tear down of this Shimano brake lever. It is uh, BLM8000 Shimano mineral oil, so they want you to use the Shimano oil. Um, this one is broken. We all pressurized the system and the oil squirted through this hole. Apparently the diaphragm inside broke and the spare part was not available then, so we bought another uh, lever and this one is declared dead for parts. So yeah, we can take it apart and see how it's made. Okay, let's start with this clamp. It's quite a complicated design. There's a screw. And you can't open it all the way. So you have to push this button here. So it unlatches and opens. Here's some plastic, which is removable. And then you can put a shifter below it. So it's quite a poorly designed mount for shifter. Compared to SRAM Matchmaker, it's like a total mess. These brakes are asymmetrical, so this one is the left one, so the front brake on the EU style or rear on the UK or moto style. Um, interesting thing here is it uses some kind of um, cam follower on the piston rod and this surface here, because when you actuate the lever, it will slide in. You see, this uh, follower moves towards the pivot point of the lever and the leverage ratio changes. So at first, the leverage, the leverage ratio is quite low and then it becomes higher. See how it moves in. It's quite, how to say, uh, edgy. It's like applying pressure and then it just jumps. Uh, maybe it's a little bit worn out and also probably of this uh, feature there's this typical Shimano on and off feeling. So this is a um, reach adjuster. When you activate this uh, screw, the lever apparently moves not just not just in like around this pivot but away from the handlebars probably they use it because uh, it's such a small lever okay. then there we have this free stroke adjuster which just moves kind of some kind of plastic inside which looks it looks like it's hinged here so there's a hinge which is then actuated by this screw. It looks like it just uh, limits how far the piston moves out of the uh, cylinder bore. So the further away it is, the further back the cylinder can move. So it's like a cylinder stroke limiter. So let's remove this three stroke screw. It is just a screw, nothing else. Uh, okay, now we can remove this this uh, screw. I mean, the screw head. There's some latch. I can pull it out now. This one is made of plastic. Injection molded. Here is the. Um, Separation of the tools of the upper and the bottom part of the tool. You can see it. You can see it. focus. Damn. Okay, you will not see it. But it's quite symmetrical, so there are no sliders making this part. Just one half of the tool from the top, half of the tool from the bottom. 
just uh, injection molded. There's probably some uh, glass reinforcing fiber in this plastic to make it stronger. Usually, I don't know, 30%, maybe something like this. Probably glass fiber. Magura makes the whole brake master cylinders out, out of this material. So it's strong enough. Um, this one I can't remove further. It's like riveted here. So I would have to, I don't know, file it off or grind it off this part to get it apart. So let's remove the lever. Okay, here we have some cut, a little bit of rubber and there's a screw beneath it. Tighten it. And now try to push it out. <laughs> Maybe not yet enough. <clears> hmm. <throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> the lever mm, the lever blade is made out of I don't know, aluminium and it started its life as a sheet metal because some storytelling uh, grooves are here which are remains of the die cutting and then it has been probably formed into this shape in multiple stages. I don't know. It also, also can be seen how it can be, how it has been cut out of the sheet. Probably also these dimples were made before before uh, forming and cutting. Probably. I don't know. I don't know. No, they weren't. Mm, I think they are made in this direction, like down there, and this at the end seems like they are made. Like they are not totally perpendicular to the surface. So all of these um, dimples were made pushing into this direction. This part here, I don't know, what is it made for, out of, it's like it's forged. And this is the surface where the cam follower moves on it. Okay, so it starts moving here and then slides inside. Like, and this is the final position when you break here's the release lever like this okay mm. this one looks like it has been forged probably this surface was machined afterwards because you see here how it rough it is and here's totally smooth You can also see here some kind of um, telltale part where the tooling has been made out of upper and lower piece. I don't know, material. Probably still. I don't have a magnet here to try it, whether it is ferromagnetic or not. It's quite... Nah, it's... 
harder than, than aluminium, I think. But why is quite nice, mate. Let's continue with the lever body. So this is the spring, oh, which will keep. Um, oh, it went away. Um, a little bit of pressure always on the on the lever, so it does not uh, rattle. So it's always pressing a little bit to the the piston. So this is some kind of catcher for. Is this one piece? Let's, let's pull it out. Okay, it has been caught in this plastic. Okay. How do I get it apart? Mm. This one is some plastic. This one is the part. Oh, this is okay. Okay, this is how the free stroke adjuster works. Like I, like I thought. So, this is like a free stroke totally out and you put it in you see it just limits limits the movement of the of the piston inside how back it can go hmm. how can i then remove this part I would say I have to pull it forward. Okay, yeah, it is out. Hmm. So this is the piston rod, which pushes on the piston. Looks, it's made out of stainless steel or something like this. This cam follower, it runs really smoothly, maybe. So this is the end of this shaft. Oh shit, so many parts. So many parts. It's shaft. Is it actually a bearing inside? No. Try to maybe turn it to see whether it's, there's a bearing. Oh, even if it, if it was, no, it's stuck. But I dubbed, I dubbed the bearing. Why would it be? There are no there are no bearings for the main pivot of the lever, and then there would be a bearing on the cam follower. Uh -uh. I dubbed probably just. Another material, maybe, to make it slide better on the shaft, like some kind of some kind of brass or something, which turns so the moves the movement is smooth, like hard material and softer material for a plain bearing. Okay, what's inside here? So this is a piston. See, limited, limited uh, recession of the piston by this free stroke adjustment. But how can I get it out right now? So I would have to remove, remove this bottom part from where? If I put it this direction, no. So you have to somehow remove this hinge. Mm -hmm. There's a hinge. Yeah. How it's stuck inside? Like here? Oh yeah. <laughs> Push it out. This up. Puff. It's gone. It's made out of plastic and the shaft of this cam follower will follow this pattern. Oh my gosh. Okay, made out of plastic, but there's nothing saying which kind of plastic it is. No destination. It's 
quite hard. Also, this uh, slope here is probably made for assembly. No, for disassembly. So we can push it out in this direction when you're disassembling and servicing it. No, the parts of mine are gone, so I will not be putting it back together. Otherwise, probably injection model. There's. Um, there has been a gejector, probably. Um, otherwise, if it's made like this, in this direction, they, they had to use a slider from this side to make this groove. Or they just push it out, maybe like this. Tick, tick. Okay, probably this, because it's cheaper. Every slider costs something. Okay, three stroke adjuster, also made of plastic, shit, this direction, like this, no, this the injector, no, this, this direction. It's quite hard, I would say, not even plastic, maybe some kind of thermal set. No, it's plastic. Soft. Soft. It also looks like there's no uh, reinforcing reinforcement in it. No fibers, nothing. It's like... Hmm, interesting. Okay, let's continue. Okay, the piston already came out. I'll try to push it from the back side. Okay, this is the piston made of, of some kind of plastic again. Return spring. Okay, let's. Okay, spring came off. Two directional seals, so the seals will hold the pressure only in this direction. When the pressure comes underneath it and pushes it against the walls of the cylinder on the both sides. So there are two cup seals, directional seals, also injection molded piston, ejector. It's not even totally round. There's some, yeah, there are some flat surfaces. Yeah, you see, you see this flat surface here. Totally in the same direction where the ejector pushes it out. See, so okay, let's continue. The main body, the clamp. Um, let's remove this cover under underneath its uh, membrane or diaphragm, which compensates the volume of the oil in the system. And we broke it. So yeah. Ugh. How can I get it out? Unscrew or what? It's right screw, left screw. I don't know. Ugh. Can't even. Man, how can I get it out? <laughs> this one is made of total plastic. It just spins. It just spins. I can't. <clears throat> I screwed a two millimeter spoke into the hole and pulled it out. Ah! I can't get it off. <laughs> so this is the this dead diaphragm. 
Ah, uh, shit. Yeah, this is why this lever is destroyed. Okay, here it is. I don't know where the hole is, but this design, when there's too much pressure in the system, it will just buckle in. Maybe there will be also too much pressure onto this surface. It will simply rupture and the oil will leak. I, but I can't find the hole right now, but anyhow. Let's take a look at this, the lever body. It is really complicated. It is made out of die cast metal, probably aluminum, maybe some kind of aluminum alloy. Um, there is no designing on it. To see what is it made of. There's something RA L16. Maybe I should I should Google it, uh, but it usually you would say AL for aluminium, but I don't know what does it mean. Maybe it's uh, number of nest, number of tooling. I don't know. So after it has been um, cast, it is machined on probably on multi-axis CNC or some kind of purpose-built mill for this hole the cylinder cylinder bore has to be machined to make it smooth then all these holes for the pivots also you can see this one where the this plus plastic uh, path for the cam follower has been uh, it has been <laughs> drilled through this hole so it's like mounted like this into the machine and it machines this hole through this one also the taps for for the screw um and the interesting thing here is this is a bleed port and the oil passage amongst the reservoir and the cylinder cylinder, cylinder bore is made through this hole, which is then covered. I don't know it's, uh, what is it made of? Um, something pretty hard. Looks like stainless steel or something like, like this. And um, then it is covered. So the hole is first drilled and then covered. I would like to maybe, I don't know, I can't. I can't see it. Somewhere in this uh, cylinder bore, there's a hole through it. It's quite a complicated part, I would say, but um, the most expensive part of this lever is probably manual labor because to automate such a complicated uh, design for production, it can be quite a challenge. So that's it. Um, destroyed lever. I learned something, how it's made. What can fail, etc. Later, I took some time to further inspect why I was unable to pull out this cover with the diaphragm. You see this groove I've caused. <laughs> it's caused by this screw, which is being screwed in from the inside of the clamp from this side. So I was <laughs> unable to see it. And this is how I damaged it, um, pull it when pulling it out. 
So if you are replacing the diaphragm, there's a screw, unscrew it, and then you can pull this one out. And also, yeah, I found the, the damage on the diaphragm. It's just on this surface here. You cannot see it, but there's a hole.